Hi, Dr. Dave here. Recently, I was invited to be a featured guest on a podcast with the famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. The full audio and video podcast, along with supporting source videos, can be found via the links in the video description. In this video, I share some excerpts from the podcast and show images and shots that illustrate some of the things being discussed. Enjoy! This is Star Talk Sports Edition. On this episode, <laughs> we're doing the physics of billiards. Ooh, we found Dr. David Alciator. Or did I pronounce your name right, David? Pretty close, unless you Pretty... want to be true to my Italian heritage and say Alciatore. Yes. Alciatore. Okay, Al I want to say it that way, and I'm trying to, it, my body won't let me. Use your Dr. Hands. Dave. No, use your hands. Just, just call him Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave, that's how what I'm going to do. What is it that Coriolis actually contributed to this field? Because uh, Coriolis, as we know, was the first to give us an understanding of how storm systems circulate. Coriolis, you know, he wrote this brilliant book in 1835. I didn't see it until 2005 when the English version came out. And that was a year after I wrote my book. And I had done a ton of work. And when I saw Coriolis's volume of excellent work, I was just crushed and, and my heart stopped. Oh, you mean he, I, he scooped you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, by a couple hundred years. You know, if you study the motion of a ball, you have to look at translation, how the ball is moving in a straight line or a curved path. And you have to look at rotation, how the ball is spinning and how that's changing during the, during the shot. All right, so Coriolis, he did all the math and he had to write what are called differential equations to describe these two effects. He solved these equations and he figured out that the direction of friction you know, when the ball is sliding and skidding across the cloth, there's friction that's trying to slow it down and change the spin. Oh. Well, he discovered that the direction of the friction during a shot does not change. It's the same magnitude and same direction during the entire shot, no matter how you hit it, just like gravity. You like this, Neil, because gravity is always straight down. Nice. And when you have projectiles, nice. projectiles, the force is always in the same direction, the same magnitude. And that's why projectiles follow a parabolic path. Wow, so good. it's the horizontal version of, of gravity. how gravity works Ding here dong. on Earth. So there are certain shots where this applies. You know, anytime you, uh, you hit the cue ball with top spin or bottom spin by aiming yeah. high or low on the ball, right. after it hits the object ball, the ball you're hitting, the cue ball starts sliding and then that spin takes over, it peels out and makes it curve. Well, that curved shape is a parabola. <laughs> All right, so a Massey shot, you actually strike down on the ball from above. Maybe you've right. seen some trick shot artists do this. Yes, yes. You strike down on the ball, off center, and down into the table. It gives the cue ball a lot of spin. It gives it side spin, and it gives it what's called a barrel roll. Imagine a satellite spinning. It gives it while it's going forward. While it's right. going forward. While it's going right. forward. Corkscrew spin is another name for it. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you hit a Massey shot, it also follows a parabolic path. So I'm gonna call it the I'm gonna say shot, and <laughs> and that's when the, somebody does it, and and they say I'm gonna say you owe me some money. <laughs> I'm gonna so say, you, I'm owe say you owe me <laughs> another fifty dollars. <laughs> Normally, there's an opponent's ball between your ball and uh, and the target ball, and, and the target yeah. ball between the cue yeah. ball and the target ball. And yeah. so what you want to do is go around their ball. Chuck, and that's why we ball. have. Dave on the show? Oh, I'm sorry. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. By the, by the way, right. uh, Dave, tell us about that shot. Like, describe that shot for us. <laughs> well, it's when you want to bend the ball around another ball. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right. Okay. I actually called it the bar system first before I, uh, before mm. I decided to honor Coriolis. You're hitting a Massé shot. So you're hitting down on the ball. So you're aiming at a point on the ball, that's the B. If you project your cue, the direction the cue is pointing onto the table, it's aiming at a point on the cloth. All right, that's A. If you imagine the resting point in the ball, that's the third point, R. Well, Coriolis, when he solved all the equations for these Massé shots, he found out that a straight line describes the final answer, even though the equations do not look like a straight line. All right, so Coriolis found where the cue is pointing at the cloth, if you draw a line from the resting point in the ball to the aiming point on the cloth, mm -hmm. that line shows you the final angle that the cue ball will head after it's done curving. Right. Whoa.
Because English to, to me doesn't make sense, but it's very popular here in the US. Yeah, we say put British? English on the board. Aren't yeah. you yes. British, Gary? Shouldn't you yeah, know what yeah, English yeah, means? Yes, yeah, yes, not, Gary. Not, not into terms of billiards or pool. There's no, no such term Gary, in the UK. Well, Gary, in, in billiards, English is where you address the ball and you go, I sailed, man. <laughs> I sailed. <laughs> yeah, actually, it is related to how you address the ball, Should, where you address the ball with a tip. That's right. <laughs> Chuck, normally what happens is you have one's butler address the ball on your behalf. No, <laughs> Sorry, Dave, you were telling us how it's worked. Can I, can I talk now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, right, so go for when it. When you hit the ball off center, you impart side spin, clockwise or counterclockwise spin. In Just the to early be clear, days, that's clockwise okay. or counterclockwise seen from above. Seen from above, yes. Yeah. So when you hit yes, the left okay. side of the ball, you're imparting clockwise spin. Yep. Yeah, looking from above. You know, in the early days, pool originated from the aristocrats. And because the weather was so bad in England, they had to bring croquet inside. They put it on a table. The balls kept rolling off, so they put these rails on the table. Uh, now, when the balls got close to the rails, you know, the croquet mallet, if you can, it's like a hammer, right? Usually you hit it with the, with the hammer part. But when the balls are close to these rails they put on the tables, they had to turn it around and hit it with the end of the mallet. Oh. That's where the pool cue, that's where the pool cue came from. Ooh. And for many hundreds of years, that pool cue was just a bare piece of wood just like the end of a, a croquet mallet. Mm -hmm. All right, now with a bare piece of wood, you cannot hit the ball off center very much. If right. you do, it slips right off. All right. All right, so in the early 1800s, around the same time of Coriolis, somebody put a piece of leather on the end of the tip one day, and now they discovered they could hit the ball off center and apply spin. Now I'm answering Gary's question, where'd the word English come from? All right, because after these uh, leather tips were invented around Coriolis's time, this English guy came to America and was given these exhibitions. And he had this leather tip on there. Nobody in America had that yet. And this English guy was hitting all these wicked shots, like Massey shots, and spinning the heck out of the ball, making the ball dance around the table. Well, the Americans hadn't seen that. They said, look at this English guy hitting these English shots. English. Yeah. English. Mm, Side spin. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, we still use leather. You know, it's been, it's been 200 years. Engineers have not improved on leather. It's just wow. really, it's really good stuff. Dead animal skin is the best thing to put on the end of a pool cue. So there's no vegetarian pool sharks. That's what that comes down to. Yeah, yeah. I've had several people ask me if there's a vegan alternative. There are some, but it's not acceptable. To yeah, there's player. a vegan alternative. It's called losing. <laughs> <laughs> now, how on earth am I getting a stationary ball airborne by hitting down on it? So that's called a jump shot in pool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some novice beginner players have probably executed jump shots before, but they haven't been the legal type. Right. The illegal type is where you hit under the ball too low and it right. scoops up in the air. It's called a scoop right. shot. All right, that is not legal. All right, for several reasons. Okay. One, it can damage the cloth. <laughs> it's actually too easy to do it. You have to hit down on the ball and that causes the cue ball to actually compress the cloth and bounce off the slate. It's a legal jump shot. You can make the cue ball bounce over an entire obstacle ball. And this is a very important weapon in modern pool. Eight ball is the most common game in America. Right. Most people know what that is. You, know, you have to get the solids or the stripes first, then pocket the eight. So the other game, nine ball, that's the game of choice of, in pro tournaments now. And it's also historically the gambling game. And Neil, I got to mention this. The number nine, does that sound significant at all? The number nine, nine balls, they're all well, spherical. Uh, I, no, because there are eight oh, planets in the solar system. Get over it. Dude, don't even go there. Just don't. No. Just, just, just be glad you're in a Zoom room right now. Because I might come up there and put my foot up there. No. Well, I always no. thought it would be so cool to have a, a, a ball set where each ball looks like the planets. You know, a you different a, planet. Yeah, a That'd different planet. Yeah. But you ruined that, didn't you, Neil? Yeah. <laughs> you just ruined that. <laughs> but how many shots ahead? is a high-end Paul Billiards player actually mentally calculating? And they intuitively know what they're doing. What are they calculating? You know, what sort of geometry are they able to see and feel? Well, you say it looks intuitive, but they are thinking about a lot. They just do it very quickly. Even I don't think about physics and geometry when I'm at the table, except in certain shots. I do have mm -hmm. geometric systems for aiming certain types of shots, like bank shots and kick shots, where you're right. getting sure. balls off rails then the geometry can help, but you still have to adjust for the real world physics on a pool table. Well, anyway, right. good players always think at least three balls ahead, especially three, in- Three shots ahead. Yeah, three, always. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Now in a game like eight ball, you often have to think through everything if you're playing at a high level. You have to think about the whole game and work backwards from the eight ball. You got to first see where can the eight ball go? 
what, right. what should I choose solids or stripes? Right. Well, if the stripes are blocking the eight ball, then you probably have to shoot stripes because otherwise the eight ball can't go in anywhere. So you always think backwards and then, and then right. you have to say, well, the eight balls here, these other balls are in the way. Once I clear all my other balls, where do I have to get the cue ball to make that eight ball? Right. So you got to think about what, what is the, what is the key ball to help me get on the eight? That's the last ball you pocket, the last stripe or solid you pocket to get shape on the eight. And sometimes what happens is you don't have a shot to move forward. So what yeah. you want to do then is play some defense to yes. make sure that your leave puts your opponent at a disadvantage. But squirt, what place does this hold on a pool table? Well, when you hit a ball off center, it does not go straight, which is right. part of the challenge of using side spin. Mm -hmm. It squirts off slightly. Sometimes it's called cue ball deflection. The cue ball does not go perfectly straight where you're aiming. It deflects off to the side. So if you hit the right side of the ball to impart right spin, which is counterclockwise from above, the cue ball squirts to the left slightly. And you have to be able to adjust your aim for this. But what about the cue? I mean, is it, are, we, are we stuck in historical tradition and it's wood only? Or have we, have we made any advances there? Well, since the 1400s, it's been a wood cue, just like that, that original yeah. croquet mallet. And huh. just in the last 10 or so years, has carbon fiber, carbon fiber. come out? Ooh. And, it's, and you know, there's been other attempts in the past with fiberglass and aluminum, but right. they just did not sell. And you couldn't play well with them. Yeah. But the carbon fiber is truly a revolution. It's the yeah. first, I think it's really the first, uh, other than the ivory to phenolic transition, uh, carbon fiber is the first true revolution in pool equipment. Otherwise, yeah. nothing but, has but, changed. Nothing has changed what, in hundreds of years. What is the carbon fiber doing for you? The carbon fiber is very strong and very light. And what determines the squirt is how heavy the very end of the cue is. And the reason is because when the tip hits the ball, the ball starts to rotate when you hit it off center. Mm -hmm. When the ball starts to rotate, the tip is being pushed to the side by the ball. And the tip has mass. It doesn't like being pushed to the side. It pushes back. So when you hit the right side of the ball, the ball starts to rotate. It, the, the rotating ball pushes the tip to the right. It pushes back, which makes the cue ball go to the left slightly. This is Newton's laws of action and reaction. There you Bingo. go. Bingo. Okay. I think a lot of people would have spent much more time paying attention in their geometry class and in their physics class had they known about your pool tables. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so tell us, where do we find you online? Yeah, if people want to see some videos that, that demonstrate a lot of this I stuff. Do. I have a Facebook page. It's Dr. Dave Billiards. I have a YouTube channel, Dr. Dave Billiards. I have a website, drdavebillards.com, where I sell my book, my videos, t-shirts, all kinds of stuff. Cool, cool. I have another website, which is probably of the most interest. It's billiards.colostate.edu. That's um, all free stuff. I have thousands of videos or hundreds of articles I've written. Because a big challenge in modern times is how do you make everything relevant? And uh, I think no one will walk by a pool table the same way again. <laughs> All right, we're, we're actually done here. David, it's great to have you on. And uh, I'm, I'm always pleased to learn that they're complete experts in things that you know, we don't otherwise think are, would have experts or may, would even deserve experts. And there you are bringing the science down to earth. Thank and you, that's Neil. And what, that's what we try to, how we try to roll here on Star Talk. Uh, All right, guys, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, signing off for Star Talk. As always, keep looking up. If you want to learn more about anything discussed, check out the videos and resource pages linked in the video description. The full podcast is also linked if you want to listen or watch. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.